Warning! This video is shocking. Because we're gonna we're gonna talk about shocks. Follow me. Today I want to talk about motion ratio. Motion ratio is important because you can take, say, an 8-inch travel shock and turn it into 16 inches of travel. Motion ratio in itself is not a real difficult concept to wrap your mind around, but it can get pretty nuanced when you nerd out on it. So we're keeping this video at, like Starbucks and Uggs level of basic. Hashtag basic bit. The most fundamental way to kind of conceptualize this is to think about the relationship between your suspension and your shocks. For a given amount of suspension travel, how much does your shock either compress or extend? I stole my kid's whiteboard again. All right, let's start off basic with what we call a short course style four link. Say we're running an 18 inch coil over a shock and we're making 18 inches of suspension travel. That gives us roughly a one-to-one -one motion ratio. Moving down here, we have a canoe style lower link and that shock is moved up on the link. Say we're running a 12 inch coil over a shock and we're making 24 inches of travel. Now we have a two to one motion ratio. Now what that two to one motion ratio means is for every two inches of suspension travel, your shock is compressing or extending by one inch, i.e. two to one ratio. Now let's say we're running our shocks perfectly perpendicular. Perpendicular. A one to one ratio. As the suspension is compressing and extending at a really rapid rate, that means that that piston within the shock is also extending and compressing at a really rapid rate. Like most things automotive, friction is the enemy and it's no different with shock tuning. As that suspension is compressing and extending, it's building up a lot of heat and that can actually cook and fry the internals of your shocks. TV! Blow fire in your face, you fucking donkey! The larger diameter of shock, the better its ability to withstand those forces and not build up as much heat, which results in that shock fade or cooking your shocks. With the shocks mounted in that perpendicular one-to-one -one ratio, the shaft speed is really fast. So yes, they're gonna build up a lot of heat. It's not the first choice for a lot of people who are pre-running for extended periods of time. We do make big boy shocks that can handle uh, a lot of forces, but they are more than a dollar even. Now let's say we choose to lay the shocks at a more severe angle so they can fit under the body. What we've done by leaning that shock forward is increased our motion ratio or more suspension travel with less shock travel. This is gonna slow down that piston speed because the piston speed isn't matching the exact speed of the suspension, but this also places a giant load on your shocks. Your shock is having to work two or three times as hard to control that same amount of travel because it's at a mechanical disadvantage. Now, as long as you have a semi-reasonable motion ratio, this isn't a huge deal, and you can actually tune your shocks to account for that additional load. But remember, even though your shaft speed is slower, that additional load is gonna create a lot of friction and therefore heat. So still, make sure you're getting the correct diameter shocks to match your needs. Now, if that was way too simple for you, let me make it more complicated. Suspension motion ratio is not always a linear equation. It can change throughout your suspension cycle. Maybe you have a two to one overall ratio or a 12 inch coil over making 24 inches of travel. But at some points in that suspension arc, it's gonna be 1.5 to one or 2.5 to one, but averages out to two to one ratio. And that's a really common dilemma with this old Bronco. No. Anyways, like I was saying, <laughs> this is where it can get really complicated, especially on rides like this old Bronco, because people are trying to lean the shocks forward so they don't have to go through the bed floor into the passenger compartment. Don't remember where I saved this. It's been on my phone for years. So if it was you, you made this. Thank you. It's an exact rendering of this 64 inch spring under kit. And it shows the difference with the shocks mounted through the bed floor versus laid down and how the motion ratio changes. So if you look right here, you can see the shocks mounted through the bed and how little that angle changes throughout the suspension cycle compared to under the bed and how drastically that angle changes throughout the suspension cycle. The issue with the rendering with the shocks under the bed was the motion ratio actually got worse and worse towards full compression. Suspension should be progressive, ideally getting stiffer towards full compression and that shock moving closer towards 90 degrees at full compression. That shock was actually doing the opposite and moving away from 90 degrees towards full compression, putting it at more and more of a mechanical disadvantage. Not to say that you can't run the shocks under the body on these and have it work really well. There's a shit ton of people out there doing just that. I'm running the shocks 
under the body on this build. But on any suspension system where your motion ratio is actually getting higher towards full compression, you just need to valve accordingly in order to compensate for that. Otherwise you could end up with a system where your shaft speed is actually getting faster towards full compression. So unfortunately, there's no one size fits all, put a bow on it, easy peasy answer for what your motion ratio should be. It comes down to your application and what you're gonna do with your vehicle, your vehicle's weight, because that has a drastic impact on all things suspension related, as well as any packaging constraints. If you're not willing to go through the bed floor with your shocks, or if you're like, fucking give me the saws off. Yeah. All of those things have to be considered and there's trade-offs either way. If you go too far in one direction or the other, chances are the most optimal position is somewhere in that sweet spot in the middle. Cheers.